<laughs> can I ask her a question for you, maybe? Yes, you <laughs> possibly can. Where are you from? Um, uh, Fitzroy. I, I live in Fitzroy. Fitzroy is a suburb of Melbourne. That is correct. And but you have a space commander suit on. Yes, I'm a, I'm a street performer. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. From originally from a part of America. From, from Canada. Yeah, from Canada, the Canadian part, part of America. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what part of Canada? Uh, well, I was born in the West, grew up in Toronto in the East. Yeah. Mm. And you ended up here in the South. <laughs> I ended up here in the South because I just couldn't cope with the winters. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is supposed to be summer here, and it's now Apparently. 17 degrees. Yeah. Well, you know, it's still better than minus 30. What's your name? David. Yeah. David, not Hotch. Well, Space Commander Hotch Marzinski is my alter ego. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you working here today? Uh, yeah, I come. To, I've been coming down here every year for five years. Yeah, every Sunday. Every Sunday? Pretty much, yeah. When I'm not, you know, when I'm in town. Yes. You know, I travel over to the Northern Hemisphere in, in Australian winter, to work mm -hmm. over there and mm -hmm. come down here, and this is my home pitch. Yeah. Mm. And you've been, does that mean you've lived in Australia for five years? No, I've been in Australia since uh, 1990. I came over as a permanent resident, and I am mm. now a full-fledged Australian citizen, mm. part of the vast cultural mosaic of this <laughs> fine country. Did yeah. you make yourself a family here? Um, yeah, my uh, my fiance is with me. She's from England, and but we've started a business here, you know, a multimedia film television in business. Uh, the street the street theater is very much something that I do for myself. You know, it's yeah. it's fun and and uh, it's always how I've made ends meet between you know mm -hmm. regular jobs, if you will. Tell us about your English fiance. Uh, oh well, her name's Abby Collins. She is also a street performer. And, uh, is that how you met, performing in the street? Uh, yeah, we were at the Glastonbury Festival um, a while ago, a year and a half ago. And uh, we met there, she was performing, I was performing in the same place. And so we met and I said, come away with me, I'm traveling the world doing street shows. And she said, okay. So off we went and off traipsed we around the world and mm -hmm. came back here. I said, oh, by the way, I've got an apartment in Melbourne. <laughs> so she gave up everything and joined me. Uh -huh. and, came down here and we've been carving out a life for ourselves. Yeah. Why, why did you decide or why did you take that commitment that you would take her away around the world with you? Because I was in love with her. Yes, but why? <laughs> oh, um, it, people, for a person like me, I suppose, has a difficult time with uh, finding somebody who understands the transient nature of what I do. Mm -hmm. So uh, to find someone else who is ready to pick up and go at a moment's notice to you know keep the money coming in and to keep the creative juices flowing mm -hmm. it's very rare and so when i did find her and found out that we were of like minds it was a matter of well you know i think i found what i'm looking for where is abby now she's having coffee in there oh good we yeah. might get to meet her yeah they're yeah. over at uh, rumba's and they're mm -hmm. having coffee with some of the other street performers and are you, have you already done a performance? Or are you going to do a performance? No, it's too cold. <laughs> There's nobody here. My life's a mess. Can you give us a, a little personal analysis about yourself? What sort of person you are? Because you, it's one thing meeting you here yeah. like this. What are you like at home? Oh, God. Are you the same? No, I'm obsessed. I'm, a, I'm an <laughs> obsessive person, I think. Because I... I um, when I get my mind set on something, I can't stop until I've finished mm -hmm. it. Maybe I'm an achievaholic, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I, I find that I, uh, I, I come up with an idea or I have a dream and I will stop. I will not stop until mm -hmm. I've you know, completed that. Mm -hmm. What happens when you, when you don't achieve what you want to achieve? Do you get depressed? Well, <laughs> First of all, I like to say I always achieve what I set out to achieve, all right? Just look at that straight, mister. I get frustrated, you know? I mean, I've been working on a project right now that's taken me about two months, and I'm, uh, I'm at a point with it now where I've got to learn certain things, and uh, they're boring things that I have to learn, but in order to facilitate what I want to do, I have to learn it. And so, yeah, I'll go up and I'll spend eight hours in our editing suite, you know, mm -hmm. learning this, this stuff and mm -hmm. come out eight hours later not yeah. really feeling as though I've achieved anything. You know, a week will have gone by of eight-hour mm -hmm. days and I'm going... <laughs> but you're in the process. You're on the way. Yeah, you're I'm on the way, but it's not, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm... Yeah, I kind of feel like I was born at the wrong point on the timeline in history. Mm -hmm. I feel like I should have been born maybe in another 50 or 100 years. Mm -hmm. And that way, you know, maybe not. Maybe I would have been born then and it would have been the same thing. Oh, I should have been born another 100 years from that. I should just never have been born. This is Abby. <laughs> Abby the Dangerous. <laughs> Tell us, Abby, about your version of how you met. 
<laughs> right, well, we met about a year and a half ago, wasn't it? At Glastonbury, 94. Uh -huh. And I was performing trapeze and dance and dressing up as an English bobby. And I met David on the outside theatre stage. Our eyes met and we fell in love. <laughs> Instantly. Uh, we yeah. actually met a year before. It was like a momentary passing of the eyes, and you remembered that, you see. Uh -huh. Very romantic sort of thing, I just had to add. Yes, yes. And then... But what? actually, the year before when I saw him, I thought, ugh. <laughs> ugh. Scumbag. Yeah? Look, yeah, at, look at these eyes. He really fancies himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What made oh. you change your mind? Um, I think I looked longer. You looked longer. I looked for You found the qualities longer. that you didn't notice before. Yeah. You know, that's say about first impression. <laughs> <laughs> and then what, hap count. what happened then? Um, David said, come away with me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's the dating game. <laughs> David, David said, come away with me. Yeah. And I'll teach you to do a street show and come to, come to Poland, come to Prague. And I'd always wanted to go to Prague. So I left. I left everything, everything for this man. I dropped uh, the company that I was working with. I dropped the boyfriend of nearly two years. Yeah, we had failed to mention that I'd mm. stolen her from another man. <laughs> no, no. It does happen. <laughs> what did you say to him? <laughs> I'm leaving, goodbye. Um, I tried to, I thought dishonesty was the best policy. Well, you know, it's not working and... Uh, I think we should break up and I'm going to go to Europe and work in Europe and, and then he kept saying why are you going why are you going and I ended up telling him the truth and it was terrible it was terrible it was awful he yeah. nearly kicked the door down mm. really hurt was he yeah mm. and so was I it was awful mm. I'd never want to go through it again mm. so mm. I hope this one to keep mm. oh yes it <laughs> Oh, very. I mean, we're asking David about, you know, whether he's the same at home as he is when he performs. Oh, my. <laughs> um, Go on, lay it on. It's okay. You the troll. Everything that David does is a performance. Is it? It's cooking. Mm -hmm. David appears to be a wonderful, domesticated man in the presence of an audience. <laughs> as long as there's an audience around, as long as there are two people to entertain, mm. then David will cook and David will clean and yes. David will get annoyed that people yeah. have left shoes everywhere. Yes. But when it's just me and him, then <laughs> David goes off to computer land mm -hmm. and I get left with everything, lumbered. Yeah. But you, but you forgive him? <laughs> um. I get on with it. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. But then he doesn't do anything for weeks and weeks, yeah. and then I end up getting fed up, so I leave everything, and then David plays the domestic Nazi, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's it. No, oh, the do domestic do. Nazi. Good choice of words, darling. Stomps into the kitchen, look at all this. Yeah. And we have stupid arguments about the right way to wash up and the right way to dry up. Only because I'm older than she is. How to place the cloth so it dries, so it doesn't smell. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows how to do all that? Well, oh, I do, David. of course. I know how to do all of it, of course. <laughs> Which is why I have to do it, because I'm in training. So I have to do it, to train, to learn how yeah. to do it properly. And when I learn, I'm sure that David will resume commander of the kitchen. What are you like at home? Um, Not just any, anything. I'd say I'm pretty good. I'm, mm. I'm Consider it. We um, we live in a studio and we have lots of um, people coming in mm. and out. Yeah, we live a very um, uh, un, uh, un un unregulated, unconventional lifestyle. We run a, a an art studio and so many people come in mm -hmm. daily to use the space, mm -hmm. which I've lived with all my life. Can I get rid of that lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> Are you an easy going, level tempered sort of person? I'd probably have to say no. I'd probably have to agree. <laughs> we have a lot of people coming into the studio using it for dance classes mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, it gets a bit much and it, yeah. I'll, I'll sort of sit back and then I'll get really annoyed. And what do you throw. do when you get annoyed? I used to throw things, but I don't throw things so much anymore. Do you put the knife down? <laughs> <laughs> I'd never lived in such a hectic space before, and mm. I, even now sometimes I just want to say, Go away! <laughs> Go away, all of you! Mm. But you don't so much? 
No, I'm I'm a, I'm acclimatized to it, and yes. because um, I dance a lot, and we like to use the space, and there, there's no other way that we can have access yes. to such a wonderful yes. space. Yes. So it's worth the sacrifice. Right. Yeah, it's because we have we've also had a lot of people staying with us over mm -hmm. time. You know, because of the mm -hmm. nature of the work that we do, being street yes. performers, we travel a lot, so we stay at other people's houses, and so yeah. we feel we have to reciprocate. And so over the past year, we've had a lot of people staying at our place, and of course, those people don't live the same way that we like to live and so things don't get put away and so and so as opposed to complaining to them we complain to each other and, yes. you know. I get blamed usually for yeah. a lot of oh that's not true yes it is okay maybe a little bit you come from an English background you come from a Canadian background but yeah. you're soulmates you're close now I think so we are there are still differences of uh, David's got this big thing about English culture and the class system but when it comes down to it he's one of the biggest snobs I know <laughs> He really I is. just have, the only problem I have is with the fact that the English still look at Australians and Canadians as colonists. <laughs> oh no, I That's don't. My problem. I don't. I don't see any shackles around the ankles <laughs> of these people. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs>